Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what are my favorite fields, subfields, whatever you want to call them, of mathematics. Uh, my very biased collection, because, well, favorite, you know, favorite is always very biased. And we are already with number seven. Um, and this one is, well, analytic combinatorics. So if you Google analytic combinatorics, so maybe uh, let's us try to do that live. Pull up my little browser here. Analytic combinatorics. Can I spell that? Does it really matter whether I can spell it or not? Um, let's see what happens. So let's see what comes up. So let's zoom in a little bit here. Fantastic. So of course there will be some Wikipedia page, but there also should be, ah, wonderful. There should also be a Wikipedia page just on uh, probably the most prominent book. What? Don't, don't bother me. But on the most prominent book in this area, which is really highly recommended. Is this famous book by Flagellet and Cedric? Well, I probably pronounced it wrong. Uh, but essentially, this is really kind of a nice collection of everything you need to know if you work in analytic combinatorics or you want to work with ideas from analytic combinatorics. And it, it's just it's just it's just really fantastic. Just highly recommended. Okay, so what is analytic combinatorics uh, all about? Well, maybe what is combinatorics all about? Well. In my opinion, in my biased point of view, uh, combinatorics is the art of counting. In whatever fashion, sometimes you write down bijection, but anyway, bijection between two sets is, is, is counting anyway. So combinatorics is counting. So how many objects are there of type X, Y, Z, right? Um, something like that. How many How many X exist, how many whatever. So some counting like problem. Whatever counting means. Um, for example, the number of possible orderings of a deck of n cards, right? That's so counting the number of orderings. And you shouldn't be too surprised. It's not so difficult to see that this is like given by a very, very nice formula. It's just n factorial. So counting takes many types of forms. Uh, what, what you usually see is like closed formulas. So this really is a closed formula, a very closed formula actually, n factorial. Um, sometimes you see recursions or other types of, of counting things. Okay, that's roughly the idea of combinatorics. You want to count something and whatever kind of form counting takes. Could even be, as I said, kind of a bijection between sets or something. Okay, that's combinatorics. There's a, a very condensed version of what combinatorics is. Combinatorics equals counting. And of, of course, this just meant this is quotation marks, right? Combinatorics equals counting. And one of my favorite examples of uh, counting in combinatorics is you count the number of colored trees. Well, so the counting the number of colored trees on a um, certain number of vertices. So here we have five vertices in this picture. And colored trees really means you color the nodes and the, the, the graphs are the same if there's a permutation, just a permutation, but keeping the color of the nodes, so you count those colored number of trees. So here's an example, let's, let's have a look at this one. This is a nice tree. A uh, tree is just a graph without a cycle. Here's a nice tree, uh, but they're not the same as colored trees because well, let's say the root vertex is yellow and here it's green. So it's colored trees that are different. And you just count the number of colored trees. And it's one of the most, um, kind of the nicest, one of the nicest theorems you ever write down in this business is a so-called n plus one and minus one theorem. So the number of trees is just really easy to count and you get a beautiful closed formula as everyone likes it in combinatorics. It's just n plus one to the n minus one. And the only kind of shift I have here is I count trees. I just shift everything up. So usually the formula looks like this, but it's somehow known as the n plus one and minus one theorem, which sounds a bit better than the n n minus two theorem. Uh, anyway, so it's just really easy to count the number of trees. And if you want to do it, it's actually not so difficult to prove. Um, it's not recommended as an exercise. You need to think about it kind of hard. Uh, maybe that is recommended as an exercise. Anyway, it, it's not something you write down immediately, but you should be able to uh, write down a proof. And there are many, many, many proofs of this fact. And this is like the good combinatorics. This is just what combinatorics really, really loves. You count a certain number of natural objects, whatever that is, colored trees, whether colored trees count as natural is another question, but you count, some, you count something and you get a, a really good answer, right? It's just a, a little bit surprising that the count here comes out uh, so nicely, so easily. 
That is somewhat very, very exciting. As I said, Common Athletics loves that. And then, well, you, you're kind of in this belief that everything is nice, right? Everything is nice. Oh, I was so young. Everything is nice. Oh, this is, uh, uh, life is shit, you know? <laughs> so uh, nothing is nice. And you should kind of celebrate the nice ones. So if you could just uh, go back a little bit and you remove the coloring, just the same problem, count trees, not colored trees, just count trees, um, then you will do, well, try to maybe the following, you just count the number of them. So you have one and you have another one with three vertices. So here, one with, one, one with two vertices, one with three vertices, two with four vertices, whatever, how many with five vertices, uh, three and then six vertices, whatever. Let's just do it. Let's just, what I would do if, if I get this sequence, I just go to the online integer, uh, integer sequence, if I can spell, but it doesn't matter. It will correct that energy. Online intro sequence, integer sequence, much better. The <laughs> online integer sequence. And I just put them in. So um, I guess there's one tree with one vertex, there's one tree with two vertices, there's one tree with three vertices, and there are two, and there are three. How many with six do we see? Uh, like six. How many with seven do we see? Uh, I guess I need to 11, whatever. Fine. 11. And you find the sequence number of trees of unlabeled nodes, kind of unlabeled, right? So we really have nothing colored here. And it continues, like 23, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, turns out that there is no nice formula. So if you scroll down here, you will not find any really nice formula. A lot of people thought about it. So you have some form of a generating function, but it looks not that fantastic. And you have some other things. But um, yeah, finding a counting formula for this problem is like difficult. And this is a little bit surprising, right? So now this is like super difficult. And before it was... Easy, right? really nice. And that happens in combinatorics a lot. As I said, life is actually shit. So you should think of, I call it a bad example, but actually it's like the prototypical example. So most counting problems do not have a nice solution. Even such something that's kind of seemingly innocent, like counting the number of trees on certain vertices. It's kind of just not happening. So what we really need is you need kind of the non-counting approaches. And that's where my, 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 my personal, that's where analytic number theory comes into the game, right? So non-counting approach, because most counting problems are just really, really, really difficult. And even such easy kind of baby examples, if you want. And you can do that. And what people usually do here is here is, for example, the number of trees, you kind of give up on an explicit count. And you just write down an asymptotic formula where asymptotic just means uh, like the ratio of two functions gets gets really good, it goes to one, right? So that's asymptotic. So if the ratio of the function goes to one, we call that an asymptotic formula. And it's not that difficult to write down an asymptotic formula for the number of trees, which is a little bit fun because you have, you have two constants turning up that I don't, I think never no, appear nowhere else. So that's what it should be. Nowhere else in mathematics. And they're called the tree constants. And here they are, whatever. The number of trees grows roughly like three to the n, but it's not quite three to the n. It's something like 2.996, blah, 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 blah. Probably a transcendental number here, 2.9, whatever, whatever, six. And this is kind of a nice solution for a problem that seemed to be impossible. And this is like the analytic solution, because now you have something that works for large n, right? You don't have a accounting formula anymore, but you more have a something that kind of a limit type thing, analytic. That's the whole point of analytic combinatorics. And analytic combinatorics studies those similar questions of a non-counting approach. And the book Analytic Combinatorics, which is exactly the same name, has like a zoo of, uh, let's say, tools to study similar questions. So usually you do some generating function type thing or something. So it's really, really large and very well developed field. So whenever you are meeting something in your research or in whatever, and you try to count, but the counting is too difficult, maybe the analytic uh, approach will help you uh, in this case. And really it's all more motivated by something you've probably have seen, uh, namely the randomness of prime numbers. So even something easy like prime numbers 
they are really really kind of random that you just kind of kind of night don't cut cards you kind of can't count them nicely they just appear randomly and they really just look like noise if you zoom out so here the prime numbers don't try to look for patterns if you zoom out it's just it's just noise let's be realistic but the analytic number theory proposed now this idea of studying them using limit methods using probabilistic methods using something like that right to analytic methods and analytic combinatorics just does the same for other counting type objects because in the end most counting type objects whatever it is uh, are random in the sense of prime numbers anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i also hope to see you next time